capnography and end tidal CO2 are great tools to a point. 20 years ago, when they started selling these non-invasive end tidal CO2 cannulas, they were traveling the circuit talking all about how end tidal and capnography monitoring was going to render pulse ox monitoring a thing of the past, how you can identify early shock, and how you can identify acid-based derangements without an ABG. And people, myself included, jumped on the bandwagon and were using the hell out of these things. I think that end tidal CO2 monitoring and capnography are great tools. It is absolutely crucial to use end tidal on an intubated patient to confirm your ET tube placement. It's a great tool to use on cardiac arrests. If you have an end tidal less than 20, you're headed in the wrong direction. And if it's 10 despite good CPR, the patient's pretty much a cadaver. If you're coding the patient and you see a big jump in end tidal, like it was 22 and now it's 64, chances are extremely good that you're going to find a pulse on that next pulse check. I also use end tidal and capnography to analyze the waveform, namely to look for that shark fin waveform that indicates bronchoconstriction. If I'm treating a COPD -er or an asthmatic and they have that shark fin and I watch the waveform develop a plateau and start to normalize, then I know I'm making headway in fixing the patient. And there's also some utility in using it to help differentiate between CHF and COPD or asthma. The last instance I want to mention where I routinely use end tidal and capnography is when it's an overdose or it's a patient who I have heavily analgesed or sedated. They can sleep at their heart's content. If my numbers and waveform are good, then I know they are resting comfortably and breathing just fine and I don't need to go, hey, you okay, every two minutes. Those scenarios aside, and they are important big time scenarios, I'm not one of these people who monitors capnography on every sick patient. Like metabolic acidosis, I don't really care what the end title says. If the patient is sick appearing, has a history that makes me think their pH is low, and they're breathing 48 times a minute, then no shit the end title's probably going to be low because they're blowing off all of that CO2 to try and compensate for the acidosis. Identifying early shock, I know they've written about it and there is physiology to it and call me a negative Nancy, but my position is that if you need an end tidal CO2 monitor to tell you that the patient is in an early stage of shock, then you haven't done a good history and assessment. The airplane long ago left the gate and you're still at the airport bar. Now here's where I'm going to get controversial and probably piss some people off. In sick respiratory patients, I really don't give a damn what the end tidal number is. It's a red herring in my opinion. If it's abnormal, it could mean something or it could not mean something. If it's normal, that could be a good thing or that could be a bad thing. There is limited utility in focusing on the end tidal CO2 number when treating a patient with difficulty breathing. There's this thing called the Bohr equation that determines dead space. The answer to the equation is a gradient between the PaCO2 in the blood and the end tidal CO2 that we see on our monitors. The greater the gradient, the less likely the end tidal value is going to be accurate. Patients with conditions that increase dead space like PE, low cardiac output states, but also respiratory conditions that prohibit air exchange in parts of the lung like asthma, COPD, pneumonia, anything really that can cause shunt, which is where deoxygenated blood passes into the systemic arterial circulation, will F up your end tidal number and render it potentially as inaccurate as Jeff Clawson's priority medical dispatch system. When the patient has dead space, shunt, and the gradient that I mentioned is elevated, the amount of change in ETCO2 and the direction of the change can be disproportionate and in the opposite direction. That is why I love, love, love end tidal CO2 and capnography when it's going to be useful. Using it on every single sick patient is often just mental masturbation and can trip you up with inaccurate data.